Hi, I'm Bob Tabor with LearnVisualStudio.net. In this lesson, we'll talk about jQuery plugins. And a plugin is simply a mini library of code that's based on jQuery. In many cases, uh, they create user interface widgets. However, any functionality that you can write in JavaScript or jQuery can be used to create a jQuery plugin. All you need to do is simply add a few more lines of code and then adhere to some simple plugin rules. Uh, it's easy to create your own plugin. However, we're not going to be doing that in this series of lessons. But once you've created a plugin, or if you want to use somebody else's plugin, all you need to do is reference it in a script tag, much like we've already done by referencing uh, jQuery itself. There are literally thousands of plugins available, and jQuery has a listing on its own website. Generally, I'm able to find a plugin for just about any functionality that I can possibly dream up. In fact, in many cases, there are several similar plugins to choose from, so most of my time is spent just learning the differences between the various plugins that are available. Which one's more robust? Which one has better support? Which one is more stable? Which one has the functionality I'll actually use rather than the nice-to-have functionality that might make the library larger than, it, than I really need it to be, and so on. Uh, I just want to demonstrate in this lesson how to use a simple plugin or two, uh, and what I'm going to do is use jQuery's own jQuery UI library, which was created by the makers of jQuery. So I feel confident in recommending this as a first step into plugins. I'll demonstrate uh, in this lesson how to use one of their uh, tab widgets and then also the date picker widget. Uh, but more importantly, what I want to do is show you how to solve your own problems, how to fish for your own food, I guess you could say. Instead of feeding you, I want you to be able to find out how to implement uh, these plugins that are created by various different um, uh, people and read the documentation, figure out how you need to configure it so that it works the way that you anticipate it to. All right, so that's really my focus in this lesson. Let's go ahead and start by looking at the jQuery UI homepage. Like I said, uh, most of the functionality will be wrapped up in widgets. However, it doesn't have to be a UI element per se. For example, these interactions are widgets that give you uh, advanced capabilities in your existing applications, like making things dra draggable and droppable, or resizable, or selectable, or sortable. Um, but in our case, we're going to look at the widgets, particularly this tab widget. And we want to implement one of these on an example web page. Now, the first question is, how do you actually get jQuery UI? Well, you get it the same way that you would get jQuery itself. If you take a look at this page on uh, the ASP.NET website, so the address I'm looking at is www.asp.net slash Ajax library slash CDN jQuery UI and then the version number 817.ashx. And this might change, so you may want to just do a quick uh, query for jQuery UI Microsoft CDN to find this exact page. Um, but you can see that you can include the UI library by either choosing the full source or the minified version of the URL. And I'm going to go ahead and copy that because I'll use that in just a moment. There's another option here too. If you take a look at the home page and you can click this build custom download. Now when you use the jQuery UI min.js, it's going to give you the full UI experience, um, which can be a rather large file. If you don't need all that functionality, what you can do is deselect all the components and only select the pieces you need. In our example, we would only need the tabs and the date picker, and it would include those elements of, for example, the core or the interactions that are required and I can click download and it'll create just a custom download for me with only those uh, lines of code that are needed to support the tabs and the date picker. Uh, when you choose this file, you're gonna get the entire experience so you would have a much larger download file and it will include things that you may not even need within your application. So just be aware of the two different approaches. You can host it locally using a customized version or you can use uh, a CDN version which is going to contain the full library. All right, but at any rate, once you decide on how you're going to do that, we need to, first of all, start with our HTML page. You can see I've already created 
uh, a c9js underscore 17.html page. You can pause the video here to catch up. Uh, what I'm going to do is create a reference to this script file. And it's important too, whenever you're pasting in HTML or something you've copied from HTML, you need to make sure it's clean. I had an extra little bullet inside of there that I needed to clean out. And just to make sure this all works, I've got in my script17.js file a simple ready function that'll just pop open an alert. So let's make sure we get this far and it's all hooked up correctly. Got here, and you can see I have my page, awesome. So what we wanna do is go back to the demos and documentation for the jQueryUI.com page. And I wanna go down to the tab widget entry, and I wanna see how they actually configured this to work. So I'm gonna look at this example, and I see all I need to do, or at least they have a simple example where in their ready function, they are referencing an, uh, uh, a element with an ID of tabs and then calling a method called tabs in order to fire off and to create that tabbing structure. And if we look inside of the rest of the HTML demonstration, we're looking for something that has an ID of tabs. It happens to be this div tag. So we have this, this enclosing div tag. Inside of it, there's two sections. There's this unordered list with a list of items and then a series of div tags. The div tag IDs match up with the hrefs for each of the list items, uh, the anchor tags inside of the list items. So I'm guessing that's how this works. When you select this one, for example, it displays and hides all the other information from the other, from the other div tags, all right? So the easiest way to get this to work is just to copy out uh, the HTML. So let's grab everything, including this div class demo copy that and let's put that into our web page and I do this just as a starting point so I can get to learn uh, how it works and what's configurable about it going back to the example I want to grab out this little call to the tabs method and put that here in my ready function All right, so let's just assume for the moment that this is all I need to do. I think that's gonna be a false assumption here, but let's just test what we have so far. All right, I can see all the div tags. I can see the unordered list, but they don't look like they've been set up in a tab sort of way like this example has. And the reason is because we're missing uh, a cascading style sheet. If you take a look on this page again, you'll see below the uh, the CDN location for the jQuery UI, there's a number of themes. And I think what we're gonna need to do is add a theme. We can use one of these pre-created themes by just simply adding a link uh, uh, rel equal style sheet and to this href that's here, this CDN for each of these CSS files. Or if I'm ambitious, I can go over here onto the jQuery site itself, and I can use this theme tab to roll my own theme, to create my own theme. I'd have to set the fonts, the header, the toolbar, all that, and this is a little playground in which to do it, and then it spits out a, uh, a CSS file at the very end. That's a little too much for my purposes. I like this .love. Um, CSS file, so I'm just going to pull that one from their CDN. So I copied that location inside of that text box. And going back into my HTML, I'm going to add a link. rel equals style sheet. Type equals text slash CSS href equals, I'm going to paste in that URL that's on my clipboard and close it off. All right, so let's see. If I've done this correctly and I go back to the web page in question, I should just have to refresh. And there it is. It works. Awesome. 
So now I've got some tabs with this custom style sheet. Very cool. All right, so next up for me, I want to figure out how to work with this. Uh, I kind of understand what I need to do to create the tabs, but what if I dynamically want to add another tab? Well, this is where I'm going to go back to the to the um, to the page that describes the usage of tabs, and I'm going to start looking through the documentation. Uh, notice first of all that. Uh, I can create tabs dynamically using the tabs uh, method passing an argument of add. So I know that there's an opportunity for me to do that. I'm going to take some time and maybe read through the instructions here to find an example of what I'm looking for. I happen to know that if I look on this methods tab and I scroll down, there's an add entry. And this will show me the usage for adding at runtime another tab. So that's what I want to do. Um, I think one of the interesting things about this is, first of all, you give it a string called add. In fact, that's the pattern that all of these use uh, to tell it what you're trying to accomplish. You give it a URL and a label. I guess the label would be for the, for the tab text itself. And it says you use a full URL, relative or absolute, no cross domain support. So I can't, uh, from since I'm working locally, I can't reference some page online and have it pull it down, unfortunately. So I'll keep that in mind. Maybe I'll just use uh, one of the pages, the Click and Bob page that we used uh, earlier. So to do that, let's go back over here. And I should just be able to, after I call tabs here, I'm going to call tabs add, give it, give it a, um, a URL of c9js underscore 16.html, I think. And then we'll call this Click uh, Bob. See if that worked. Refresh. Hey, I got a new tab added at runtime through my JavaScript code or my jQuery code. When I click on it, it does load in that page. Now there's some formatting issues to be sure, but it seems to seems to work pretty much. All right, so very cool. I was able to easily read through the documentation figure out what I wanted to accomplish, find a quick example in the documentation, and then experiment to get the feature or the functionality that I was looking for. And I can continue to tweak this to get it to work exactly by replacing the HTML and those div tags, replacing the tab, uh, tab names, and so on. But I think it's time to move on to a second example. Let me shut references to that down. And this time what I want to do is take a look at the date picker control. And I can see a quick example of it when I put my mouse cursor into the text box and it's been designated as a date picker, it'll pop open a little date picker window. So I can choose, for example, the 27th or whatever the case might be. Here again, I want to view the source. It looks like it's easy to use, pretty much similar to what we saw in the, uh, the other example. So there is some consistency here, which is awesome. So I'm just going to copy this. I'm going to place this call into my jQuery file, my script17.js file rather. And then what I'm going to do, we already have a div class equals demo, so I'm going to put this below my tab. In fact, I don't really need much here. It looks like I just need this input ID equals date picker. So now let's paste that into right here. Let's save that. And now let's uh, double click our file to open it up. And we see we have a date picker. And there it is. And it's themed exactly with the exact same theme from previously. That's awesome. Now, if I look through the supporting files for this, let me see what my options are here. If I look at the events tab, it shows that I, there is an on select event that I can handle. And so it seems easy enough. All I got to do is create a literal object with a property or rather a method of on select and then define what I want to happen in an anonymous function 
passing in the date, text, and the, um, the instance. And I don't think I have to change that. I can just leave that the way it is. So let's experiment with this and see if I can get this to work. When somebody selects a date, I want to pop it op open in a, in a um, well, actually, I'll just change the title of the web page to the date that they selected. So instead of installing and utilizing jQuery plugins, I'm just going to change it to the date that was selected. Seems easy enough. So here I'm going to go back to my date picker, and I'm going to modify this. Uh, it seems all I need to do is just give it a literal object, if I remember correctly, and then define the onSelect event, colon, and then give it an anonymous function with a date text and an instance. And then I just define the body of my function. And so here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get at the title, which should be that H1 that I've had on all my web pages. And I'm going to change the text to you uh, picked. And then I'm going to be able to use this uh, date text value, I think, to grab off whatever was selected. At least I hope that's what it is. All right, so let's see this in, in action. Let's refresh our page now. And let's pick a new date, and it says you picked 320-2012. Awesome. All right, so I got it to work. All right, so like I said earlier, there are so many plugins, and in some cases they're poorly documented, but they almost always have examples. So that's where I start. I run the examples on their server, I copy the code down, I try to get it to run locally exactly like they had it, and then I start to tinker with it. Change this, change that, to see if I really understand how to make it dance the way that I want it to dance. Understanding its basic operation. Uh, then I start to think, how do I need things to work in my application? And I begin to consult the documentation or to search for more examples online or or in their documentation to get me a little bit closer to where I need to be. And occasionally the plugin will get me close, but it's not exactly what I need. So when that happens, I have a few choices. I can either spend some time finding a similar plugin that does exactly what I need it to do, or I can ask myself, do I really need that functionality? Do I, can I live without it? Or I could spend a few days and hack around inside of their plugin because I can get at the source, right? It's just downloading jQuery and JavaScript and I should be able to um, grok through it and understand what it's trying to do and then make some small changes. Or worst case scenario, in fact, I think it's the best case scenario, is just contact the plugin author, ask if he would do it for free. If he doesn't do it for free, ask him how much it would cost to get him to do it. Uh, I'm assuming that you have more money than time, at least in that final scenario. But at uh, any rate, one last note, not all plugins are created equally. You'll want to make sure that your web page performs as expected when JavaScript is turned off, uh, a topic that we're going to explore uh, a little bit later, uh, possibly even in the next video. I forget exactly where it's coming up when we talk about unobtrusive JavaScript. Also, you'll want to thoroughly test, test, test your application, test that uh, and understand how that uh, plugin works in all web browsers because most plugins that are free are written by developers in their spare time and sometimes the quality is a little bit lower than you might be comfortable with. So as with all things technology related, you want to test, test, test again, okay? All right, so hopefully this was beneficial. Uh, you'll get very far very quickly by using jQuery plugins. Hope that helped. We'll see you in the next video. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you.